Hi, I'm Matt Kassendorf, Senior VP of Business Intelligence and Insight at the Four A's. A big emerging opportunity I see for agencies is a bit of back to the future. As consumers look for greater understanding of how brands support what they believe in and align with their values, the need for authentic storytelling is paramount. And terrific brand storytelling is something agencies do very, very well. Hi, I'm Helen Lin, Chief Digital Officer for Publicis Group. In the next year, we know that content and commerce will only continue to come together in new ways and increasingly virtual environments. The pandemic further caused e-commerce and our time spent with devices to surge, and that just gives rise to the concept of community commerce, which blends creators, communities, shopping, and entertainment. The role of social media and influencers, coupled with the rise of AR and new technologies and in new environments, has allowed brands to engage with consumers in a deeper way, like virtual try-ons, shopping festivals, and certainly content, commerce, and customer service will only deepen digital as a way for consumers to interact with businesses. As we plan ahead, it's really important to understand that social commerce will take new life in the metaverse and Web3, but we shouldn't forget that these experiences will be additive and not replace Web2. It's no surprise that retail media is one of the fastest growing digital marketing channels, with ad spend projected to increase 28% to $24 billion this year, nearly doubling to more than $41 billion by 2024. For brand marketers, one of the main virtues of retail media is the ability to deliver closed-loop measurement, which allows advertisers to measure the impact of their ad spend all the way to the point of purchase at scale. For this reason, 76% of marketers plan to use sales data either frequently or very frequently over the next year. The rise of retail media and the growing pool of consumer data is giving marketers a clearer picture of how their campaigns impact consumer actions, with retail media providing critical connective tissue. In this session, moderated by Ashwini Karandikar, hear from a panel of savvy marketers about how they are navigating the opportunity retail media presents today, the measurement and attribution capabilities of these digital tactics, and what they predict is on the horizon in the retail media space. Take it from here, Ashwini. Thank you, Molly. Um, I think everyone at the forays knows that retail media and retail media networks are two of my favorite topics, and I keep talking about them all the time. The retail media network phenomenon is not really that old, and yet it's already one of the fastest growing digital marketing channels with ad spends projected to be around 24 billion this year and almost doubling in the next two years. Um, several of the people in the audience already know this. The Trade Desk has been a leader in this space. And I'm thrilled to introduce Brenda Tuvig, SVP Global Data Partnerships at the Trade Desk, to lead what I know is going to be an excellent discussion about the rise of retail media. A very quick introduction to Brenda. As Senior Vice President Global Data Partnerships at the, at the Trade Desk, Brenda oversees all aspects of the Trade Desk data partner ecosystem across targeting, measurement, CTV, identity, and retail uh, partnerships. Prior to the Trade Desk, Brenda was Vice President of Global Agency Partnerships at, the Glo at, at Oracle Data Cloud, uh, which was a global business unit within Oracle. And then prior to it being acquired by Oracle, she was at Data Logics from 20 2006 to 2015 where she was general manager of the CPG business unit for data logics. Brenda, I'm gonna now hand it over to you to take over what I think is gonna be a fabulous discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ashwini. Um, thanks for the introduction um, and thanks to um, all the panelists for joining today. We're really excited about this conversation. And as you heard in my background, CPG and CPG retail is definitely a passion of mine. And I'm, I'm just thrilled to have the opportunity here to have a little bit of a conversation about retail and retail media networks. So first, before we jump in, I'll do a quick introduction for the other panelists who are joining me today. Um, we have Aaron Sobel, who Aaron leads media investment at Unilever, um, has a wealth of, of uh, investment and partnership experience across all channels. And Aaron's over 16 years in media spans a range of categories in marketers from Coke to Microsoft to Fiat Chrysler. We're excited to hear from you, Aaron. 
Um, the second panelist I'll introduce is Andrew Rugger as um, GM's Global President of Commerce. Andrew is responsible for scaling commerce-focused products and services for clients. And um, he is the bridge between all of Group M's capabilities in the commerce category and um, leads the group's collaboration in WPP work streams across commerce. And so bringing us the agency point of view, which we're excited to hear about. And last but certainly not least, we have Evan. He is joining us from the Albertsons companies. Uh, with only five months in, um, he's, he is tasked with building data and marketing products for their retail media business, but has a lot of retail experience having spent the last 17 years at Target uh, developing strategic partnerships. Um, so really excited for our conversation today. Again, thank you everybody for joining and let's jump in. So maybe we'll just start with a sort of teaser question and, and uh, open it up to each of you. Um, so what's the best thing about your job? Help us understand a little bit more about what you do and what excites you and gets you excited day to day. Maybe I'll start with uh, Andrew. Um, well, thank you. Uh, happy to be here. I think, I mean, it's probably just getting to work with all the folks in our, you know, our collection, our network. You know, we have four major global agency brands in a hundred different markets and thousands of people. So every day coming in to work, getting to work on different projects with folks on clients from all over the world is, is I guess, you know, the most exciting thing for me because everything's different. All the clients are different and I get to learn, you know, so much kind of being in the middle of, of Group M. Thank you. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, quick round here. So we'll do uh, Aaron next. What about you? I think so, so for me, it's certainly about the people as well. Uh, I'm really excited to work with an amazing team full of kind and ambitious people that truly believe media has a purpose here at Unilever. And that purpose is to be a force for good for our brands and society. Great. That's fantastic. Um, and Evan, we'd love to hear your perspective. Yeah, I, I'm most excited about finding the potential um, in all the chaos that's coming to data-driven marketing. And so helping smart CPGs like Unilever, smart ad tech um, geniuses like the Trade Desk, bring a retail media um, set of data into market in a way that's safe and progressive. Um, there's just so much to be done and so many cool ideas to, to track down and, and vet. Um, that's, that's what gets me up in the morning. Yeah, I agree. I think I think the people and also just like how much is changing, how quickly and um, keeping us all on our toes as this industry evolves. So with that, maybe I'll kick it straight back to you, Evan, just to get your perspective since you had the floor. Um, how would you define retail media and retail media networks from your perspective? And since you're obviously the one representing retail here, I think we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly am not the authority on retail media networks, but I, I did build one at Target for a number of years and then lived the life of a retailer and the brand marketing team prior to that. Um, now doing the same thing with Albertsons, um, with our Albertsons Media Collective. Uh, so I have a unique point of view on US RMNs and I think their, their first phase of value um, is bringing commodity products to market in a way that um, meets all of their internal compliance and security needs. So that, that first wave of work probably isn't the most exciting, but it's those base uh, brilliant basics that are required for a for a CPG to invest, um, display, on-site search, uh, maybe some email integration. But beyond that, um, and, and where they need to move to is like finding those assets that make that brand unique and figuring out how to turn those into viable media products. Could be a measurement, could be a, a co-branded audience buy, could be straight up white glove managed service, but bringing those unique assets into packages that CPGs can buy, which means fitting into industry standards, things that sometimes the brand itself, the, the retailer itself hasn't had to adhere to. Um, these are usually the jobs of, of an agency. And so figuring out how to plug into an agency, plug into a, a CPG's goals and objectives, and really um, accept the fact that there's some standards that, that need to be adhered to, but letting their assets shine in, uh, in that environment. And so that's usually some fantastic closed loop measurement, some unique inventory that they own and operate. And then ideally some very surgically defined audiences that uh, bring performance to the CPG budget. That's awesome. You mentioned agency. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll ask that same question of Andrew, um, just as you're thinking about partnering with your clients, um, how, how would you define retail media and how is it kind of um, influencing your day-to-day? 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's two sides to it. Um, obviously, a lot of our clients have a commitment to the retailers for different area, different areas of their business. Um, so there's that relationship and then associated media. And then there's kind of the other side, which is, say, media proper, kind of national media, um, where the retail media uh, offerings and networks have kind of introduced something that's new and interesting for brand marketers, where traditionally it was more on the sales side. And I mean, to me and, you know, to the group, it's, we, we've kind of, we're still in the same spot we were before this came to be, you know, um, such a high level of investment, which is we have a fiduciary responsibility to invest, you know, on behalf of our clients to the, the most, in the most effective ways to hit goals. Um, and now that, you know, more and more retail media opportunities come into market, it, it warrants, you know, a greater investigation into how much quality and, and return can, can be garnered from that. And obviously, you know, the endemic side where ads are on their own, no properties, have been proven to be super valuable. Um, it's pretty obvious why people are on those sites and why you know impressions or clicks matter, drive sales. The network piece, depending on what's included in the network, um, I think there's a lot still to be learned and developed and desired in that space. But nonetheless, it's you know a growing area of investment and interest, and I think there's a lot of upside and opportunity uh, in that space. That's amazing. Great. And then just to, to round it out, Aaron, uh, from your perspective, would love to know from the brand side, how do you think about and define retail media networks? How does it kind of sit within your remit? Well, thing, Brenda. So I would just say from a retail, well, the definition today for retail media, I would say is, is performance media that is uh, focused on accelerating business KPIs uh, up and down the funnel. And in terms of a retail media network, I would define it as either um, a media network created from a customer or perhaps a third party that helps facilitate advertising on and off platform. That's that's a great answer. And I think I think performance, you know, we're all in the business of trying to make sure that dollars are spent efficiently and that you're seeing the performance as a brand when you're placing those dollars. And retail media is really just bringing new ways to target, hold the media accountable, measure, and really in partnership with, um, you know, the brand and, and its, and its, and its distribution arm. So it, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to you, Andrew, because I think the agencies have really been going through an evolution around retail media. This is a newish, you know, for, I don't want to say it's new anymore, but it's definitely a new foray and it's causing agencies to flex new muscles. So I would just love to hear from you about how you guys are thinking or how you would recommend agencies work within this new world of retail media? Um, any advice, any suggestions there? Or what's working for you guys? It's not disclosing yeah. too, much, too much confidence. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I'll tell, I don't know if I, 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 th I should be advising agencies in general on how to approach them because there's a lot of different kinds of agencies. But I'll talk about kind of what we've been doing and what I think, you know, is the best way to pursue it. And, you know, many, several years ago we had, only handful of folks who are really focused on this um, and we've grown to several thousand globally and that just again it kind of a reflection of the growing interest from clients but also the capabilities of the retailers and I mean I think there, there's two places that I really like to focus on it one is again trying to remain objective in the broader media sense which is which publishers and partners are our best investment options to hit objectives for clients and clients have sales objectives and they also have brand objectives so in that case um, the retailers and their networks are becoming a more viable option for brand, even if even if clients don't necessarily sell products on those retailers because they do have closed loop data, they have potentially better targeting than other options, um, and they have unique kind of partnerships and measurement methodologies that you could pursue that other partners, you know, potentially wouldn't. So there's an interesting area of exploration there. And the other side, the endemic stuff. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like I guess out of home or, or certain other things where a lot of commercial real estate has been historically is you want to drive traffic and product visibility where people are shopping. And it's kind of a must play area now where a lot of traffic goes to, you know, Albertson's portfolio or Walmart or Kroger or Target or any of those places. And it's a competition for shelf space digitally and their advertising opportunities. So, you know, our clients recognize it as do we that you, you have to be there to win. Um, and there's a lot on the line. So, I think it's a little bit, it's again, it's different depending on the network versus endemic, um, but we've had a lot of focus and it continues to grow. Um, but there's still a lot, I think that can, you know, there's a lot to be desired and a lot to still be done uh, in, the, in the retail media space. Yeah, for sure. And I love that contrast of endemic 
versus non-endemic? Because I think when we all think retail media network, we're thinking, well, at least, I mean, the common thought is CPG, you know, selling in a grocery and working with a grocer, but there's so many other things and ways that this can expand, you know, you're no based on purchase where people are in their life stages. And that can open up whole different aspects of the ways to leverage uh, retail media networks. So thanks for, for sharing that perspective. Um, I think Evan, we'd love to hear from you as the retailer, also now having, you know, worked at two of the leading retailers uh, in North America, would love to know your perspective on how would you uh, think about it or advise retailers thinking about getting into this space? How do they get started? What are they? What should they be thinking about doing? How do, can you help us break it down a little bit? Because it's a little overwhelming and everyone's in different places in the journey and their capabilities. So would love your, to hear from you on your experience there. Yeah, there is definitely uh, some key data points that will help drive the, uh, the path to execution for retailers. Um, certainly sizing up the uh, identified user base of that store and, and uh, assessing, is it unique and special based on volume? You know, Walmart, Target certainly see a large swath of the U.S. Is it unique based on, say, localization, specialization, frequency, and volume? Like, like Albertsons has a, a ton of high frequency, uh, large volume of people. Or maybe it's specialized in a small audience, very niche um, use case, and, uh, and that brand is, is uh, a top driver in that category. Um, if it's not below a certain threshold, then it changes the way you go to market, uh, meaning you may need more help with third parties coming in and leading in and owning some of that. That's how Albertsons got started. Um, if it is large enough and you're, you know, you've, you're a company committed to, to digital transformation because there's a large part of the enterprise that needs to help here, like bringing modern ad tech to market, um, enabling monetization across the di digital assets takes a tremendous amount of internal coordination, even bringing in uh, data risk and compliance teams dedicated to that business. Uh, it's a key part of defending um, and protecting the assets once they leave the, the, the retailer. So there's a, a level of investment from enterprise leadership that's required and an assessment of the assets that that retailer is sitting on. Um, but assuming you've passed those thresholds, then it's a phased approach. I think phase one is again, back to the brilliant basics bring in some internal search, some internal display, let your core commodities shine. That inventory is gonna be the highest margin piece of the puzzle. So get that into the hands of the CPGs um, as quick as possible. Um, beyond that, then things get a little trickier. Now we're leaving phase two, we're leaving the home base and moving out into the open web, into the social web. Um, and now a DSP integration is required, usually some audience. Um, hopefully a closed loop measurement technique can be surfaced outside as well as inside. And so we're usually looking at uh, partnerships with ID onboarders, um, measurement teams, maybe even uh, third-party measurement tools, and then certainly deep DSP integrations to let that asset shine outside. Beyond that, phase three gets into whatever your company is comfortable with bringing to market. Um, ideally, it, it's fed from a tremendous amount of customer feedback, but in there lives, I think, the, the beauty of the RMN. So programmatic retargeting, uh, certainly getting into clean room environments where, where CPGs and the retailer and the agency can do a lot of really creative lifting in service of the CPG, trying to solve problems that the, the current media landscape doesn't solve. I think that phase three um, potential is where a lot of people want to get to, but without doing the first two really well, uh, it's tough to, to land that, that third nirvana state. Yeah, I, I love that phased approach that you just outlined. I think that's what we're definitely seeing from our vantage point, working with so many retailers and brands and agencies at the trade desk. We see that, uh, you know, many are in different phases on that journey, but the way that you outline that phasing is, is great because I think start where you can and then really start to evolve down that path. Um, and there's partners to help along the way. There's a lot you can bring in-house, but there's a lot of partners to help um, with, with some of those things. And we hear so much about what you were just describing around measurement, we'll get into in a minute, the clean rooms and all the power that's gonna unlock for everybody. So that's super exciting. So now pivoting, um, Aaron, to, to Unilever. Um, how are you guys thinking about retail media networks? How have you been partnering with them? What, what's exciting to you about retail media networks coming from the brand side? All right. So in terms of how we are partnering, uh, we're looking at it um, as we want to establish, develop, and nurture partnerships 
with retail media networks in a consistent manner uh, across the marketplace. Uh, they're consistent with more traditional partners in, in terms of how we engage. And how we engage in a partnership is really to share uh, our business challenges and our goals and work together in collaboration uh, to find really strategic and smart media solutions to deliver upon those goals. So it's really key that you know we 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 nurture our partnerships uh, consistently um, across the entire marketplace. And uh, what's uh, really exciting? Um, oh, one thing is with the retail marketplace, we also know it's evolving and emerging uh, very much. So we understand that we want to maximize this partnership and relationship the best way we can uh, today, but also work together in collaboration to establish a really strategic roadmap for the future. Uh, progress over perfection is really important uh, these days. Uh, and in terms of what's compelling, this is a exciting space. And, and I think when we look forward to 2022 and beyond, uh, there are more and more opportunities that uh, are available for advertisers to, advertisers to take advantage of. This year, we could see the opportunity to extend uh, through uh, advertising through our DSP uh, or tap into advanced television advertising or expand in social environments. And we should also see a lot more opportunities with testing and measurement. So with all that being said, uh, there is a lot going on. And what's really exciting and makes it truly compelling is the quality and quantity of this rich data that exists, uh, which should really make it powerful for our brands when we advertise. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Andrew, actually, because consistency comes up a lot and standards comes up a lot. And I you know agencies, if anything, are, are typically in the role of helping the brands understand performance. I was just wondering from your perspective, how does that resonate, what, what Aaron just said, and how do you guys think about that at, at Groupon? I think you're on mute. Thank you. I had noise next door. Um, yeah, I, I agree with virtually everything that he said. I think a measured approach into the marketplace is accurate. Um, it's typically how we approach it across our portfolio of clients. And then, you know, it is exciting, but on the flip side, like, I, I still think the burden of truth to have a meaningful media product falls to the retailers and like measurement's a big piece of that. I mean, oftentimes we hear a lot of requests for very large budgets. Um, not that they're necessarily unwarranted. I can understand why they're being asked for, but they're, it's hard to justify without, you know, appropriate partnership and measurement criteria that are, you know, the rest of the industry has followed for now many years. Um, and a lot of that's gotten better. It's just, there are, there are interesting examples of where clients have worked directly with retailers on you know a variety of retailers to to get really specific you know kind of direct directly connected solutions you know matching IDs in the beginning and then matching IDs as they come through tied to loyalty to have you know overall incremental uplift which is great but those solutions are hard to scale um, and I think that's kind of where we'll see either a lot of this succeed or a lot of it fall down is that can those capabilities be scaled and if so how and how does that relate to their customer, the retailers' customers, and you know, ultimately the manufacturers or our clients' customers? How do you connect all those pieces? Because no easy task. So, yeah, I mean, really excited. Follow it in a similar way to how Aaron described it, but I think there's still a lot of work and kind of digging to be done to, you know, really justify investment at, at a large scale. Yeah. So Evan, I hear that as gauntlet thrown, <laughs> like show me that this works and this is worth the investment. So I'd love your perspective on, on what we just heard from Andrew and how you'd respond to that. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair call out. I think what the retailers um, lack in discipline around, you know, industry leading ad tech, they more than make up for with data assets and the, you know, the closest source of truth that you can get, right? An identified individual with a high frequency shopping pattern in an identified environment tied to SKU level sales relevant to the brand um, with some owned inventory and some, some proprietary measurement techniques. There is, no, there is no closed loop ecosystem with more truth than that, right? We're talking about 10 plus years of purchase history at the lowest granular um, piece of information the CPG cares about how that's been manifested into tools um, and investment opportunities for the CPG and, and agencies to play with. Not perfect, far from perfect, 
Um, and so you, when you compare that to say, you know, a pure ad tech player like the trade desk, um, and you compare the, the roots of, of how those two companies brought that product to market, you know, the, the retailer typically hasn't had a history of 24 seven support, strong self-service discipline. Um, so that needs to get cleaned up. We need to be able to bring our assets into packages that the industry cares about and then allow the experts to trade against those in a way that is repeatable, scalable, um, and defensible. The, the, the results are there. The, the truth is there. Um, how it comes to life and how it gets executed is the journey that uh, I think modern RMNs are asking CPGs and agencies to go on with them with the help of, of ad tech in the middle. We want to make this easy for ourselves too. Uh, we want to get our assets into a world where people are buying and trading um, 24 seven. And so there's a long way to get there. Um, but I think with the, the level of long-term investment that a CPG has in a retailer, if that's going to continue and they believe in data-driven marketing, um, then lean in and, and bring those ideas with their agency. Um, those ideas can include partnering with third parties or partnering with, with other ways to, to surface that. Again, it will require an investment and some time because these we are not ad tech experts in all facets, um, but we are committed to making this work. So our product roadmap should include heavy uh, considerations of those customers' needs. So lean in and, and bring those um, requests to, to your retail media network product developers and um, try to squeeze as much as you can into that roadmap. That's, that's awesome. So Aaron, you know, sitting on the brand side, um, I, in, from firsthand experience, you know, CPG brands have a very high bar for understanding performance and, you know, are some of the most sophisticated advertisers out there. So how do you think about measurement? Is it the same? Is it different as you're thinking about retail media networks and how you're going to be measuring performance against the spend there? Sure. I, we're talking about an evolution that's happening. So there's more opportunity to, uh, place our impressions in different spaces. Uh, with that, it's going to add new needs to measure. And, and I think we need to be able to evolve to measure all the impressions uh, the, as we buy uh, to really understand the impact of a video placement and how that you know, drives conversion. Uh, so I think I referenced before how we think about performance media really being full funnel. It's not just all about conversion. We need to make sure that we are measuring the impact of every impression. And there is a uh, work to do to be able to achieve those comprehensive and cohesive results. Yeah, that's perfect. And I think we hear a lot of that too. The, you know, the consistency you mentioned earlier, Aaron, is like, I think there's just a, a desire for some standardization and for some understanding consistently across the different types of places to place those dollars. So um, this time is flying by. So I do want to do a, a maybe a lightning rounds kind of final question and impart your wisdom on us, maybe in a couple sentences each, based on all the conversation we've just had, um, what are what are the key takeaways in a couple sentences that you would offer to the audience? Um, what, what should they take away from this discussion today? And maybe I'll start with, I don't know, I'm just going to talk my screen again, Andrew. I'll be in first. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I think like three things. One is have a clear measurement framework the whole organization agrees upon because if you don't do that you can't justify value then retail media there's a lot of opportunity but there's also a lot of there's not a lot of beaten paths towards the fringe of you know of thought about how to explore the best of what retail media has to offer so then get your hands kind of in there and and try to figure out solutions that work for you and then on the flip side for the retailers out there I would say like it's fairly obvious that more and more moves to digital and more and more moves to online, you know, ordering and picking up in store or delivery. And it's up to you to again show proof that it's worth running through you at a higher premium for a price than it is either direct or with a competing venture. Like, are we just subsidizing the cost for acquisition? for you or is that actually helpful to my brand? So I think measurements, the first one, because if you do that, it kind of goes through all of them, but actually engage and then you know prove it out for yourselves because there is a lot of opportunity. Great, thanks. Aaron, what's your one or two takeaways from the conversation that you'd like to impart? Stay curious, ask a lot of questions and really uh, put a lot of trust into the partnership and relationships with your retail media networks. Um, 
it's going to take some time and some patience, uh, but there could be a lot of rewards for a mutually beneficial partnership in the long run. And um, be ambitious, right? I think we could raise the bar high and set uh, high goals and really have a lot to look forward to. Fantastic. And Evan, what are your few parting thoughts? Yeah. Um, if, if you're new to investing in RMNs, I think build a baseline, find the, the areas of their product offering that work for your um, objectives um, and maintain continuity of, of those investments. It's one, one of the nice things you can hopefully establish with your, with your retail media partner is continuity over time. And so that baseline will help you decide if that new product is working or, or not. Um, but to call out um, Andrew's comment on subsidizing conversion, I mean, that is that was a uh, starting objective for a lot of media networks. That we're just gonna turn this into uh, a new vendor income um, platform. We're just gonna you know, play in that space, which is not an exciting avenue. It's, it's certainly a avenue to go down. But what I wanna build is that national, we wanna build products that appeal to those national account holders where we can defend this media against the open web. Um, we have some journey to go down to get to that level, but it's certainly not just an on-site, on-platform um, subsidizing conversion vision, uh, even though that has been some of the history, certainly, which, which would be discouraging for people like Andrew who need to defend their investment decisions against ROAS and consistency across all investments. I would also say media networks can do a better job of being consistent. So even if the Walmart Roundell Albertsons Media Collective let's say those were your top three investment opportunities, hands down. The fact that they're all different brings confusion and, dis and um, room for doubt into a CPG agency investment. So I think the industry needs to evolve and get cleaner on how we bring consistency across media networks, but then the media network needs to lean in and build stuff that works for that, for that CPG agency partnership. Um, and then if you're an existing customer or you're a large customer, um, lean in. I, I, again, I don't think we can move at the speed of some of the ad tech wizards that have preceded us, but that's where the investments are going. So some of the fastest growing teams within these retailers are the product teams uh, on the RMN. So we're hiring those ad tech wizards and uh, we're gonna try to build products that can move and flex in the ways that CPG's agencies need them to. I think that will include some DSP integration because there's some sensitivity over data ownership, but let's co build that together, like bring your vision bring your smart um, white borders and let's get in the room and, and design the future. Thank you. That's amazing. I think such a great discussion. We could easily keep going. I want to thank all of you for bringing your perspective. I think this discussion was so fascinating for me. We've got the brand, the agency, the retailer and the tech platform all represented here. And it's clear that we all need to be working together and really just pushing, pushing the momentum behind this further don't be afraid to get in the game, test and learn. Sounds like Evan's hiring. <laughs> He's a little plug for his team. I think we're all hiring. Um, but no, it's great to hear the conversation. Excited to see what each of you bring to the, to the ecosystem around retail media networks. And thanks again for your time. It was my pleasure to be here with you today. We have a lot of great content yet to come today, but now it's time for a short break. The live stream will resume at 2.30 p.m. Eastern with a conversation on one of the biggest media pivots in recent times, the evolution of out-of-home advertising and how agencies and marketers can take advantage of this always-on media channel. See you then.